The Lord be with you. Amen. Read from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Today we celebrate the Trinity Sunday, and we had the Trinity named there in the Great Commission. The Great Commission, Jesus sending the apostles out to baptize. To baptize means to give new birth to, to plunge, to immerse. And when we baptize somebody, we usually just pour water over their heads. But the, a greater symbolism of baptism really is to be plunged under the surface of the earth, to be buried and to be reborn to new life. Go and give people new life. That's the commission in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it's Trinity Sunday. Who is God? Think about that question. Who is God? And then I have an answer for you. This was in the readings just a couple weeks ago. God is love. First John chapter four, God is love. So then we can ask, well, what is love? And then love is relationship self-giving, self-donating, self-emptying. And God is a relationship of love in himself. He is the lover, the beloved, and the love between the lover and the beloved. It's one way of describing the Trinity. So God is love, God is relationship, God is a family in himself, but there's only one God. And that's a mystery. We'll talk a little bit about the mystery of the one God and three persons in just a moment. Going back to the book of Exodus chapter three, God appears to Moses in a burning bush. That's alluded to in our first reading today. God appears to Moses in the burning bush and told Moses to go to the Pharaoh and tell the Pharaoh, let my people go. Y'all know this story, I think. And so Moses is like, if I go to Pharaoh and he says, you know, and I go to the people and I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? So this is back to the question, who is God? And what was the answer? The answer was, God said to Moses, I am who am, I am. God is existence itself. God is being. God is the I am. And if we, you really kind of have to think a little bit about that, kind of put your philosophical, theological thinking cap on a little bit and think of the significance of the name I am. God is existence. Not long ago, I had somebody in my office and we were discussing God, relationship with God, our kind of littleness compared to God. And they remarked to me that as they did what we so often do, and we can do this 
just thoughtlessly. We can begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right? And this person remarked to me, who am I to speak in the name of God? Who am I to speak in the name of God? And then we ask that question again, who is God? God is love, God is existence, God is relationship, the Trinity. St. Augustine is one of the greatest theologians in the history of the church. He and St. Thomas Aquinas, when we get outside of the authors of sacred scripture and we get into the history of the church, the two greatest theologians are very likely St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas. And St. Augustine spent 30 years of his life, not every day, eight hours a day, but over a period of 30 years, he struggled with a document on the Trinity, De Trinitate of the Trinity or on the Trinity. And he was trying to come up with an intelligible explanation of the Trinity. And he worked on it and he worked on it and he worked on it and he never really got there. The best he came up with in his own mind was the Trinity is like the mind, the memory and that which is remembered. It's like this and trust me, it goes on and on and on about all these. I had to read that in my class on the Trinity in seminary, an entire semester course on the Trinity. And the end of the class, it's like, and you, and you still don't understand. That's exactly right, and you still don't understand. And this is why. There's a, there's a stained glass window in the parish that I was before I came to Our Lady of the Gulf. And in the stained glass window, there's a scene painted and it's St. Augustine standing on the beach of the Mediterranean where he lived on the Mediterranean. And he's standing on the beach and he's contemplating, he's in his bishop's robe and there's a little child kneeling on the beach and there's a hole in the sand and there's a seashell and the child is pouring sand into the hole on the beach. And so I was curious about what is that stained glass window about? So I Googled it one day and I learned that it is a scene from St. Augustine's life where he's pondering the Trinity, he's working on his work, this book on the Trinity and he sees a child on the beach and he asks the child, what are you doing? And the child said, I'm emptying the sea into this hole in the sand. And Augustine says, you know, as he might, you can't do that. The water of the sea won't fit into that hole. And he stands there thinking about it. And the boy says, and your mind will not conceive the Trinity. It's just beyond us. God is greater than our intellect. God is existence. God is relationship, God is love. God is incorporeal, immutable, eternal. There is no sequence of events in God. There is no change in God. God the Father is the principle of the Godhead. God the Son receives the Godhead entirely from the Father. The Son is God from God and light from light, but the Son is not younger than the Father. The Son is co-eternal with the Father and all that the Son has proceeds from the Father, and the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. And that is really all we can say about the Trinity, because if we keep talking any longer than that, we're gonna be heretics, okay? It's really true, we, we don't understand the nature of the Trinity because it's beyond our comprehension. At the same time, should we spend some time contemplating the Trinity or not? Absolutely we should, because it is who God is. God is, and God is love, and God is relationship in himself. Sometimes people will kind of mock God and say, atheists, and say, well, God, what was God doing before he created the earth? What was God doing before he created the world? God was being. 
love beloved and the love between the lover and he was completely perfect and whole in himself and he created us to share in his love why do we exist to share in the love and the being of god god is the necessary being we are contingent beings made by god from his generosity god is love god is relationship god is father son and holy spirit god is creator and god created you out of love and he has a plan for your life you were made in the image and likeness of god and because you were made in the image and likeness of god it's a good thing to study god we call that theology and theology is faith seeking understanding and we strive to know because doesn't a lover want to know the beloved right you all know that when you love someone even if you're a fan of someone you want to know a little bit about them so we want to know god who created us in his image and likeness not to be alone but to be in relationship so god is the creator god created us he breathed his life into us he breathed his spirit into us and then we all know that sin entered the world to destroy our relationship. Because sin destroys love and sin destroys relationship and sin separates us from God. And so Jesus comes as God incarnate, God in the flesh, God with us. God condescends from his eternal majesty, empties himself, if you will, and this is another mystery of our faith, how does God empty himself into a human condition? But God comes fully divine in the person of Jesus to reconcile us to himself by taking our sin, our broken relationship on himself, giving us the new and eternal covenant in his blood, which we will celebrate here today in the mass. So who is God? God is love, God is relationship, God is creator, God is redeemer, God is sanctifier. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The communion of the Holy Spirit. So we are going to celebrate Holy Communion, aren't we? our call into the life of God as God gives himself to us. Who is God? It's well worth your time to contemplate on this Trinity Sunday. What is God? Well worth your time to contemplate. What a gift it is to receive communion with God, that he has breathed his life into us. And yes, we do, my brothers and sisters, I know we do struggle against sin in this world. We suffer in the face of sin in this world. We experience depression and death and divorce and destruction and disease and all of those things that are not the communion of love, that are not the Trinity. As we walk through this valley of tears, in the second reading today, St. Paul said, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And then this line, this seems to come out of nowhere. Paul says, if only we suffer with him. Because love suffers in this world. And that's the cross. God is love and he has visited his people and his people crucified him. And who is God? God is the creator and the sanctifier and the redeemer and God is love and God is relationship and you and I were made in the image and likeness of God. And let us pray that we get to know God and that we have communion with God and that we suffer for the sins of this world in union with Christ, but we don't indulge ourselves in that divorce and disease and death and depression and all of the other D words that we can come up with.
but that we have communion with love, with God, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.